Okay, here we go. Let's zoom in. Luke chapter 10. I want you guys to look at the very first verse in Luke chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, The harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out labors into his harvest field. What do we see here? Excuse me. <laughs> God, 
without prayer, we don't really need you. We can do it on our own strength. And so prayer is essential because it keeps our focus on God. It keeps our focus with God. And it keeps the power of his presence upon our lives when we begin to invite him into our lives and into his mission. I always uh, tell people, uh, the Chinese underground house church movement, they have a saying that they say, much prayer, much power, no prayer, no power. It's very true. When there's a lot of prayer, you begin to see God begin to move. When prayer is little, then you begin to see what we call human programs. All right? And so you've got to pray it out before you can walk it out. I remember one of my quotes from my good friend Pete Gregg. He wrote a book called Red Moon Rising. Any of you ever read, read this book? It's a book about the movement of 24-hour prayer in our generation. And he says this quote. He says, pray like it all depends on God. Live like it all depends on you. Pray like it all depends on God. And live like it all depends on you. And what we mean by that is that when we pray, God begins to speak. God begins to move. The supernatural begins to invade the natural. Heaven begins to invade earth. The skies begin to open. Angels get released. Miracles are now possible when we begin to pray. And when we're not praying, nothing will happen. The more you pray, the more you can do for God. The people who pray the most do the most for Jesus Christ. And I remember John Wesley, he had planted hundreds if not thousands of churches within the beginnings of the Methodist movement. And people used to ask John Wesley, I mean, he literally preached something like crazy, something crazy like he traveled 200,000 or more miles, preached more than something crazy like 40,000 sermons. The guy was a madman for Jesus Christ. And they used to ask him, Mr. Wesley, how is it possible that you do so much for Jesus Christ? You preach, you teach, you baptize, you set up churches, you get persecuted, and you still have four hours to pray every single day. And he would pray from 4 a.m. to 8 a.m. every single morning, every single day, even if he preached till 12 o'clock at night. He would never, ever change his regimen and his discipline to pray four hours a day before he started his day with God. And this, is, this was his answer. He said, with so much to do, how can I not pray four hours a day? With so much to do for God, with so much that he's calling me to do these astronomical, crazy, gigantic, ginormous God things. How I many you guys know, if you can do it, it's probably not from God. Okay? God calls us to do crazy things. God calls us to do the impossible. And prayer is our faith in God to say, God, with you only can you make it possible. And so God always invites us into an impossibility that takes prayer to actually bring to fruition. And so when we begin to pray, he invokes the two to go two by two and begin to say, God, we need you. If your presence does not go before us, what can we do? And so they begin to pray. Lord, send out workers into the harvest fields. And God says, will you pray this prayer? And they go, yes, God, we will surrender our lives and pray this prayer. Lord of the harvest, the harvest is plentiful, the workers have to be. Please send out workers. And God goes, do, 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 do. That's you. <laughs> and you just answered your own prayer. And he began to send you out into that campus. He began to send you out into a pocket of people. He began to answer your prayer. He began to gather other people on your campus who are not thinking about mission. All of a sudden, because you're praying this prayer, their hearts begin aligned with God's mission on your university, in your city, in your nation. 